I have a theory about why they include the Old Testament in the Bible. It always struck me as odd that all these people who defend their book with sweeping statements like, well, that's in the Old Testament, would even bother keeping it in, right? Now, most Christians probably think that that's what God said to do, but the more learned among them would tell you that you know, you need to understand original sin and, and, and all the prophecies that Jesus was meant to fulfill in order to understand the New Testament, but that's absurd. Like, even at a glance, it's clear Jesus can't and didn't fulfill the messianic prophecies, considering one of the main Messiah stipulations was ridding the world of evil and suffering. That's, you know, probably why all the Jews called bullshit on him. But beyond that, the Old Testament is at odds with Christian theology constantly. So why would this new religion take on all the baggage of this crazy genocidal Old Testament God if they don't have to? I mean, you know, in the beginning, just they had to to legitimize their faith. That makes sense to me. But it seems like they could have just phased this Old Testament shit out sometime in the 12th century or something. You know, gone Gideon and saved the printing costs. But after reading about 60% of the New Testament, I have a new theory. See, I think they're just trying to bore you into submission before you ever reach the Jesus parts. They're presenting you with as many begats as they can in hopes that you're going to throw in the towel and just trust them when it comes to the actual Jesus stuff. Because if you never read the New Testament, you'll still be able to swallow the patently absurd idea that Jesus is somehow a kinder and gentler version of God. Just look at them at their extremes. right? At his best, Old Testament God gave us Ecclesiastes, right? And there's certainly nothing in the pre-epistle Jesus story that compares with that for sound moral virtue. And whether the Christians like to admit it or not, the golden rule first appears in Leviticus chapter 19. Hell, the entirety of Jesus' moral pronouncements scarcely hold a candle to Solomon. But, but what about at the other extreme, right? What's the worst thing that God the Father ever did? Well, I guess that would be murdering all the people and all the animals back in Noah's day. Pretty easy question to answer. And admittedly, that's really bad. You know, that's really bad. But... Is it any worse than Revelations? I mean, Revelation sounds like basically the same plan, but slower and with dragons. You know, drowning sucks, sure, but I'm thinking it would probably be worse if you were drowning in the blood that reaches the bridle of the horses, right? Right, so both testaments are fully capable of global genocide, which in my mind disqualifies them from the position of moral authority, duh, but it doesn't tell us which one is worse. So what else does Old Testament God do? Now, there's plenty of reprehensible shit to choose from here. Sure, you know, he tells Moses and Joshua to take sex slaves. He orders more than one genocide. He curses Eve for no good reason. But even at his worst, even in Deuteronomy, where he goes off for a couple of pages about all the horrible shit he's got in store for you if you piss him off. You know, when he's talking about turning the ground to iron so you can't farm and giving you boils and scurvy. He's going to make your wife eat your kids with a side of afterbirth slaw. The animals are going to pluck out your eyes. All of that shit. But even then, at his most vile, he never does anything remotely as bad as condemning people to hell for eternity. I mean, honestly, you could make the argument that the hell thing is worse than the flood, because at least Jew God had the decency to let the poor bastard slip into oblivion post-drowning. But this new and improved version of God also would have sent him to a fiery pit for the rest of time. Think for a second about what a fucked up concept hell really is. Now, to be honest, that's really hard for me, because from an outside perspective, it's childlike. There's a paradise where all the good people go, and there's an eternal torture chamber where all the bad people go. You know, that's the kind of thing a a kid's brain that still thinks in terms of good guys and bad guys can wrap itself around. But if you're not indoctrinated with the concept from birth, it seems like the theological equivalent of a lying seven-year-old losing an argument, you know? Oh, yeah, well, if you don't eat my magic cracker and give me 10% of your allowance, you're going to have to go to the very worst place that there ever was for all of eternity and do math. You know, so as such, it's hard for me to even imagine what it's like to take this concept seriously. But from time to time, I'm confronted with a brief glimpse of what it's like for the people who actually believe in it. You know, I'll get an email or I'll meet somebody at a convention or something, somebody who is raised in a fundamentalist family and escaped their religion in their 30s or whatever. And then they tell me about waking up to nightmares about hell even years or decades later. They wake up terrified by this psychological torment that was artificially implanted in their minds by well-meaning parents and grandparents. Well-meaning parents and grandparents who somehow credulously accept the idea that it's okay to tell your son he might be tortured by demons forever if he washes his dick too slowly. And consider that the people I'm talking about, those are the ones that have escaped. You know, sure, they still have nightmares about hell, but at least they get to wake up from them. At least they can get up, splash a little water on the face, look in the mirror and tell themselves it was only a dream. But what about the millions and millions of people who wake up from that nightmare and wonder what God was trying to tell them? 
you know, I, I feel confident in saying that the only thing more morally reprehensible than a psychotic deity that would condemn a person to burn for eternity in hell is the person that would freely offer to worship him.